Hey guys, it's Ben, the Pro Se Coach here in Texas. Um, we have a really great Facebook group, and if you're not a member of it, the uh, link is in the description below this video. But uh, on the group, somebody posted a question the other day when we were talking about these little videos that I do of, would you do one just upon, about what happens in a hearing? You know, and it's a simple uh, question, but I, I'm sure, I guess it's something that a lot of people worry about. So let's walk through really quickly about what happens in a hearing uh, in court. So <clears throat> for my example, I'm going to say that I have filed a motion um, against my ex to change whatever our schedule is with the kids. So I filed the motion, I had it e-filed, I served all the parties, and I set a hearing date. And so here we are, it's three weeks later, and we show up. So when you show up to court, now things are weird now with Zoom. So I'm going to do this assuming that there is no Zoom. But anyway, if they are, it doesn't really change the procedure, it just changes the way things look and feel. But so we show up. Um, judge is going to call our cause number and we're going to stand up and say we are ready your honor to have this hearing very good and then so he's going to say so what do you have so you because you're the petitioner in this case because in my case i've filed this modification so i'm going to say judge we have a we have a modification today uh to change the schedules because of da -da 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 reasons and uh should take about 45 minutes and you know the judge says okay and so away we go so the very first thing you get to do is an opening statement. So I always tell people, please type these things up. Really fancy, expensive lawyers are super good at this and they can just wing it and give these great speeches that are five minutes long and they hit all the key points. Guys like you and me don't, and it's hard. So type it out and type out exactly what you wanna say. Hit the key points to your argument for what you're trying to show. Tell the court what's about to happen. She's going to say this. You know, her attorney is going to say that. They're going to play me as dangerous or controlling or whatever it is that you know is going to happen. But just lay the foundation for your argument today. Show why it's in the child's best interest and then shut up. Her attorney is going to do the same thing. And then, you know, they're going to, of course, bounce off the things that you just said and talk about how crazy you are and all of this, that and the other. But just be ready for it. So when that's done, the judge is going to say, OK, Mr. Schooley, present your case. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call my witnesses. So that's a whole topic. I mean, who are we calling? What are they going to say? How is that going to look? But let's just say, for my example, again, I'm just going to call my ex and talk about why our schedule is not working. So I'm going to call her up there. And then again, I'm going to have a whole bunch of questions pre-printed and sitting in front of me that I want to walk through. I already know what she's going to say. I already know why she doesn't want to change the schedule. So your job here is to kind of uh, drive the narrative of, of, of how you want her to say the things that she's going to say. You know, you know how she's going to answer things. Um, so you almost have to kind of set her up for things. So, you know, for example, I mean, isn't it true that this crazy thing happened on this night in 2019? And she's going to say no. But the reality is that you have a text message where she says, sorry for being crazy. So you whip that out and go, really, what does this text message mean? And so, you know, you walk through it, you try and kind of create, the, you, you create the credibility for your own story via the questioning. So when you're done with her, her attorney's going to get up and is going to throw her a whole bunch of softball questions about, isn't it true that he's very intimidating or very scary and, you know, all of the things that are unique to your case, though they're not unique at all. While he's doing this, write them out. Write out what they're focusing on. Write out the incidents that are being talked about. Write out the, the things that she's saying that you know are not true. So he's going to question her, and then you get to uh, cross-examine. So on cross-examine, you get to do just like on TV. So, ma'am, you just said that on this date, at this time, this thing happened. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. Okay, well, let's talk about this picture I've got that is dated this day and day time that shows the exact opposite. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That is the basics of how the question and answer process is going to go for while you're doing witnesses. Just be prepared. Give yourself the time ahead of time to walk through these things so that, you know, you're prepared so that you're not up there going, uh, uh, and, you know, and wearing everybody out. The judge is trying to pay attention to the basics of your case and keep it moving. So keep it moving. When it's your, okay, so after you're done with whatever witnesses you got, you're a witness, but you're pro se. So you can't be questioned by yourself. 
So what they give you an opportunity to do is to make a statement. Again, your fully printed, prepared, ready to go statement. So you're going to get up there and you're going to talk about, you know, the key elements that you want to get across. This is how I felt. This is what happened on this date at this time. This is why I'm frustrated. I keep trying to coordinate this, that, and the other, and it's not working. My kids are stressed because of this on and on and on. So, you know, you're going to make this very, you know, not long, but you're going to make a very comprehensive statement about what you're, you're trying to get across to the court. Now you get cross-examined. Here comes her attorney who starts going, but isn't it true this and that and the other? You're going to have to walk through them. While you're walking through them on the stand, take notes again. If they're focusing on one particular thing or one date or one incident or one whatever it is, just make note of what it is that they're, they're really drilling down on because they see that as a key part of their case. It's a key part of how to poke holes in your credibility. So make note of it. So then you're going to take his body blows, okay, and then he's going to go sit down. And then you get to do a redirect. Now's your chance. Those notes you just took, you get to respond again. Man, Your Honor, they just really talked about this date where this thing happened when we were all at the Pee Wee football game. I'd really like to give my narrative of what that looked like or what really happened that day. Do it. That's your chance. So that's all done. We're going to repeat for each and everybody's witnesses. You're going to call yours. Her side is going to call hers. At the end, you get a closing statement. Um, which is just as it sounds. Thank you, Your Honor, for our time today. I have just shown you how these things are happening. I have shown you how, you know, she's been, whatever it is, out of control or un unreasonable with us or she's stressing the kids out or making scenes or whatever, again, you know, all the reasons you could come up with. But just reiterate your story. Go through your motion that you filed on the onset that says, you know, in my motion it says the following five things are happening and I need the five following um, uh, relief. And go through them and repeat them for the judge so the judge can hear again. Okay, he's saying these five things and he wants these five things. Okay, you're going to sit down and you're going to take a deep breath. Because you're done. Her side is going to get up and do the same closing statement. They're going to call you a dirty, rotten liar. They're going to say you didn't prove anything. It's all a bunch of nonsense. You're a control freak and you're, you know, whatever. The, what is it? Narcissist and sociopath and all of the words. They're all going to come out. You're going to grind your teeth a little bit and then it's over. Judge is going to rule. When the judge rules, make sure you get your details done. Let, as an example, um, okay, I'm going to change the schedule for pick up and drop off to the following. Great. But make sure you get things like where, you know, who's driving where. These things will grind you later because the judge will say, y'all are going to switch on Fridays for, you know, the kids are going to switch on Fridays. And then he's going to say, okay, come on. If you don't ask where or how, guess what y'all are going to be arguing about tomorrow? Because your ex is going to say, I'm not doing anything. You have to come pick them up from my house and drop them off. That's the deal. Now you got problems. And you, this is how things can drag out and be frustrating. If the judge says, I want you, as an example, I want you to go to counseling. Okay, how many times? Then what do you want? You want a report? Okay, let's set that hearing date. Make sure you, man, you got to get all your loose ends as tight as you can get them. But, you know, get all that together, um, get out of the hearing. Normally, her attorney will type up an order based on what just happened in court. Trust me when I tell you, be extremely careful here. I promise you that order will not reflect what the judge said. They will change it. They will kind of give a little liberty here to change a few of the things the judge meant. Uh, maybe he forgot to say that, you know, like I said, that you're not supposed that you have to come pick uh, the child up from her, her house and drop them off. You know, you got to, I mean, fine tooth comb that proposed order. Make sure it comes back to you. Sometimes lawyers will do that. They, they type up the order. Next thing you know, it's signed and sitting in your email box. You didn't even read it. Make sure you, everyone on the record understands, hi. I want to make sure I get a copy of that proposed order before it's submitted to court. Thank you. Because that's your right. You're supposed to be able to review these things. Lots of pro se guys don't do it. And it burns because the next thing you know, you got another hearing scheduled to fix that one little part that they screwed you on. But you're going to get the order back, go through it. You're going to argue a little bit with the other lawyer. 
Most of the time you guys hammer it out. If you don't, you get to go back on a motion to clarify. Judge, we can't agree about who's picking up the kids. Where? Because we didn't talk about it. See why it's important to do this in the hearing? But you go back, judge hammers that out. You get a little closer to the order. Order gets signed, order gets filed. Now you got an order. That's the basics. There's a million moving parts on all of that. Every situation is unique. I know, you know, I mean, my silly example is just one. I, there's, there's an endless number of examples, but that basic process is how that works. Preparation is really important as pro se. These guys, you know, lawyers, I mean, they have tons of experience doing this. You don't. Things like objections is so critical. Knowing what to object to and how to do it is so critical. That's another thing I would always have in front of me is a list of objections so that I could reference it quickly. Um, but you do, you figure it out pretty quick. But, um, you know, that's the basic process. Um, people are scared of going to court. And I understand, especially as pro se. Once you've been through it once or twice, you kind of understand the process. You, you see how conversational it is for the most part. There is a lot of minutia to it. But if you, you know, if you just don't find it as overwhelming uh, at the first, as you go through it, it becomes a little easier to understand how it works and what you really need to know about and not know about. But, you know, take a deep breath, prepare a lot for this. Don't wing it. You will get burned. Um, if I can ever help, I'd love to walk you through the process. I, you know, just in terms of coaching and just giving you advice and just some help and suggestions. That's what I do. My website is prosaycoachtx.com. Again, we have a great Facebook group uh, in the description below. We'd love to have you. And thanks so much. Talk to you soon.